Every year, we all aim to be a bit better. But of course, sometimes we don't know ways on how to improve. It all just takes a couple of steps and a few things to really advance ourselves. Whether it's learning a specific skill or just wanting to improve on how we live our lives, self-improvement is important to be the best you can possibly be. So this is why in this video, I'll share 10 effective self-improvement habits that you should try to adopt this year. Whether it's just a few on the list or all on the list, one guarantee is that by adopting these well, your life will begin to change in ways that bring a sense of fulfillment in your life. And so these are all the habits you can't go wrong with. So before I continue, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want more tips and tricks on how to improve productivity with the help of psychology. And let me continue to help you mine gold in mind. So to kick it off, we start off with number one, start the day early and well. You've heard it time and time again, but try to start the day early. This doesn't need to be at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. like some hardcore hustlers, but just need to be a bit earlier than the standard time you'd wake up. A study by biologist Christoph Randler in 2010 found that early risers are more proactive. People that wake up early feel more in charge with their life and have an extra few hours before the day starts to really reflect on what they want in life. A survey conducted by Harvard Business Review revealed that the majority of CEOs wake up early, with most starting their day around 5 a.m. But keep in mind, getting up early is great, but learning to start the day off well is also key. If you just get up and watch YouTube videos or doom scroll, then it's probably better you just sleep and get more rest. Instead, try to start the day off right by doing things that you don't necessarily want to do, but you know that you need to do to move forward. This will help you feel accomplished very early at the very beginning of the day. Then second is to read more. We all know that reading more is helpful. There is definitely a lot of dread sitting down and reading something. This is especially true these days as a lot of Gen Zs and Millennials don't even have the patience to sit their own body down still and just pay attention to a singular thing for long periods of time, as this is an age of shorts and reels, which I talk about in another video. But luckily, reading doesn't have to only be with a book on hand. With everything being digitalized, reading can come in the form of audiobooks, podcasts, and even information content presented online. Reading expands knowledge, proves focus, and stimulates creativity. It can expose you to new ideas, different perspectives, and even inspire innovation. Most nonfiction books are tips and advice people have summarized into a single book that only lasts for a few hours. So what this means is that in this day and age, there is no problem that you have that just hasn't been answered in a book of some sort some time ago. So learn to read more, as there is an endless treasure trove of wisdom out there from people either much smarter than yourself or more experienced than yourself. And they're all sharing the secrets to navigating your worries, concerns, and problems more efficiently. Then the third is to learn how to manage time. A survey by Microsoft found that people are productive for only about 60% of their available work time, indicating that there is a significant room for improvement through better time management. When we feel overwhelmed by our workload and life in general, we get stressed. And more stress equals greater negativity. So in this hectic age, Learning to manage your time, whether it's knowing how to prioritize your tasks, setting realistic goals and deadlines, and avoiding procrastination, all of this is key to increasing productivity, getting more done, and as a result, reducing the stress, build up, and feeling more fulfilled in general. And remember, it's not just in the mind either. A study in the Journal of Occupation and Environmental Medicine found that workers with high levels of time management had lower levels of health complaints and stress. And then of course, try to manage your energy as well. While managing time may be an obvious one, something you've heard many times before, one thing that does go hand in hand with this is also learning to manage your energy as well. Willpower, as I talk about in another video, is like a muscle. Over time, it loses power and exhausts itself, especially as the day passes. Our brain, after all, has a limited number of mental cognitive resources that can actually help us going effectively. What this all means is that if you have a limited amount of energy in your mental and physical states to get you executing efficiently, then you need to learn to manage this precious energy throughout the day. So instead of trying to do more constantly on this never-ending hamster wheel, learn to allocate your physical and mental energy into things that actually matter. This goes the same for content you consume because even though it may feel like a passive action, your brain is still digesting everything, so it's taking up mental resources. So you don't want to be digesting content that is garbage free. Then the next thing on the list is to do a digital detox. Since we live in an age where it's almost impossible not to use a computer or a smartphone or any other technological device, it can be easy to mistake in your break time as just scrolling through your phone mindlessly. But as I talked about earlier, doom scrolling in itself depletes precious mental energy, your attention. 
And so while you might not think you're doing much, it is actually doing more harm to you than you think, depleting the energy you could otherwise use for more productive manners that move the needle in your life. So learn to take breaks more regularly from your digital devices. Digital detoxes, which I cover in more detail in another video, helps to reduce stress, improve focus, and promote healthier habits. It can also help with physiological issues of eye strain and disrupted sleep. And as I've talked about in other countless videos, staring at your screen for too long and even being on social media can actually cause more anxiety and depression than you think. Then learn to stay active. Another byproduct from all of these digital devices and tech use is as a whole, we've become quite sedentary. We move around less sitting in our desks or laying in our beds and sofas. But moving around and being active is key to not only getting more blood flowing through your brain and body, but also maintaining the energy levels you need to perform at the highest level. Regular physical activity is crucial for both physical and mental health, enhances your mood, boosts energy levels, and improves sleep and reduces the risk of many chronic diseases. Exercise also helps to manage stress and anxiety leading to better overall well-being. And even in just a few minutes of exercise a day, moving around can stimulate creativity and allow you to think more clearly. Then learn to know yourself and be humble. Self-awareness is key to personal growth. If you aren't aware of what you're capable of, or even what kind of character you have in times of adversity, challenges, or anything in between, then how can you actually expect to be better? Knowing yourself is all about understanding your strengths, your weaknesses, the values, passions. You need this self-knowledge to make more informed decisions and set meaningful goals and to pursue a more fulfilling life. We live in an age where we try to coddle our egos to believe we are the best at everything. And while it's great to believe in yourself, this ego boom generation falls into a delusion that ends up inevitably becoming broken as reality kicks in. So knowing yourself in a real way is learning to be humble and accept that you can't do everything yourself and that failure is a part of life. Admitting this is okay. It's just the reality of being human. It's only once you learn to acknowledge your faults and weaknesses can you begin to take action in actually improving yourself. If you think you are perfect or amazing at everything you do, then ultimately there's no room to improve. Talking about self-awareness, we go into the next habit, which is to reflect regularly. One of the best ways to know yourself is to reflect on yourself regularly. Whether it is through journaling or measuring all the goals that you want to achieve, make sure to track your progress in everything you do. Anything that can't be measured or is not measured has no value. Even the smallest self-improvements should be tracked and measured so you can reflect on what you're doing right and what you could do to be better. But reflection isn't just in measurement, it's also in meditation. Reflection helps in learning from experiences and looking at yourself objectively instead of the subjective experience we all take when viewing ourselves. And of course, we are all social creatures. So as much of self-improvement is a process of facing ourselves, the fact of living in the real world is that world is made up of many people, and we all need people despite what we might think. Nothing can ever be done alone, so you need to learn to network better. Even if you want followers, subscribers, or anything of the like, all of that involves being able to persuade people. This is why one habit to adopt is effective networking. It isn't just about meeting new people, it's about learning to build meaningful relationships. Strong networks can provide support, advice, opportunities, and feedback. And it's this feedback and support system that helps you grow. After all, if we're just measuring and evaluating ourselves, after enough time, you may even become jaded in your own judgments because you're just really observing yourself. You need people. And finally, the last habit is to sleep well. Quality sleep is essential for health, well-being, and overall cognitive function. Great sleep affects mood, energy levels, and honestly, your ability to think clearly. Even though a lot of us who desire to be more productive or do more may get carried away with the grind and feel like life is too short to sleep, but this is a misconception and mistake. With little sleep, you are robbing yourself of the ability to remember more effectively, you're preventing yourself from encoding information deeply into your brain, and simply being able to be the most optimal alert self when it comes to learning. So to improve yourself physically and psychologically, you need to sleep well. And to do that, you need to get rid of any distractions that will deter your sleep at night, and make sure to adopt the right habits in thinking before bedtime. In the end, each of these habits contribute to personal and professional success. And the best thing about it is that most of these habits are evergreen, meaning that they are things that can help you no matter what age, what period of life you are in. They are everlasting in their benefits. So whether you want to be more productive, creative, or motivated, learn to adopt a few of these habits mentioned in the video, and I guarantee you will start to feel better with yourself this year. 
And if you want to learn more about productivity at large, make sure to check out this awesome playlist of videos I've made in relation to improving productivity through psychology. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can continue to feed you nuggets of gold on boosting brain and behavior.